Hi, this is MXUX. This is MXUX. This is a uh, Lordstown Week news video. It's about Lordstown Week. Going to go over uh, how to find a live cast and watch it. Camping World News. Uh, some insights on insider selling. The interim CEO and Ohio in general. And this is MXUX. So let's uh, get to the video. Okay then, this is the first topic here. Lordstown Motors, not part of Camping World's electric future. So this was the big announcement. In my last video, I had mentioned that I think that I thought this was the problem, and I thought Leotis here was going to maybe come up with some money and get uh, more deeply involved with Lordstown. They had mentioned joint venture partnership, all kind of different terms. But anyway, this, I believe, is what did Steve Burns. This was a disagreement with the board and the top executive, Schmidt especially, and Darren Post both mentioned we are not going to build uh, camping world uh, campers or whatever. We're not building campers. And uh, this is Leotis. We are launching the electric world with an amazing assortment from around the globe. Linoa said, Lordstown Motors will not be part of that. So, there you go. Lordstown Motors will not be part of that. So, I suspected that this was, uh, now this may be a branding thing. Um, I mean, if you look at the response to the camper ad on uh, for the Tesla pickup, I mean, it's blowing up. I don't know. They got 100,000 orders. I forget. And then you got Rivian with the camping gear, the, the stove that slides out from the pickup bed, whatever. Uh, so I don't know. I, I didn't, it didn't bother me personally. I thought it was, uh, you know, made sense, a synergy. But, you know, there's branding people now that are uh, in charge, and they may have felt that this was going to damage the brand or take the brand off into a direction they didn't want to go. So anyway, that makes it formal. Here's the tweet we are launching without, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, announced a partnership, announced a partnership, uh, and they were going to provide service and maintenance and uh, roadside assistance. Anyway, and they were going to build the, uh, the shelves to become uh, EV campers. I think this is a good market. I think somebody's going to make hay with it. Maybe Lordstown will come back to this. But, uh, you know, with limited resources, I imagine they wanted to focus. Who knows? I, I think it was a branding thing. I don't know. Anyway, I think that's what... Uh, the, the, the wedge that separated uh, Steve Burns from the board was this whole concept. So, moving on to the next slide. Now, I want to get into the um, Lordstown Motors, uh, the insider selling, which has been such a big deal all over the Internet from all the haters, you know. They got the stiff neck and, uh, you know, they got the head like a, canned ham and uh, you know the chick with the uh, phony accent and they're all foreign by the way not that that's a thing I'm just saying anyway this is a summary of the insider trading stock hut has gone over this this is old news but I just wanted to give you this here the number of shelves shares sold was a million million and a half uh, the number bought was 46 47 million by insiders. So what is that? Uh, 40 to 1? Okay. And everybody was talking about the sales. All right. There you go. 40 to 1. Um, now, let's just look at these sales. Darren Post, and that was on 2-4. Okay. February 4. Rodriguez, the CFO, 2-4. Schmidt, 2-3. Juan, uh, two, two. Uh, Shane, two, two. And, and Schmidt again on two, two. Now, uh, I have it written down here somewhere. I think, uh, I think it was about $25 a share at that time when they sold. 
and you can see here 20,000, 70,000, 170,000, 190,000, and 290, and 350,000, something like that. All right, here's the prices right here, the strike prices, okay? Um, now, everybody's saying, well, that's before the, the, before the bad news came out on the earnings call and all this. Well, I got another theory. I'm just going to put this out there by way of explanation. The, I think the key event that happened right around here was the award of the Postal, and this was on 223. So this was about, um, what, two weeks later? A little less than that? and announced that uh, Oshkosh got the uh, U.S. Postal Delivery Vehicle uh, contract, the entire contract. This, by the way, was an abomination. And this, uh, I mean, I don't see how this can stand. They need to in investigate the insider selling, ins insider buying. You know, this head of the Postal Service needs to be investigated by the SEC and the FBI, as far as I'm concerned. There was all kind of insider trading going on around this whole thing. And, um, I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, granted, uh, workhorse, perhaps not the whole contract, but a portion of the contract. And I'm going to go over later why this is so critical to have this electric fleet on the road in the United States of America um, for the country and for the modernization of our grid and for the uh, implementation of electric vehicles and for us to still be a leader in the world. You know, this is all very important to go backwards on this. And I mean, this is just an abomination. So anyway, this was February 23rd. I, I personally think that they may not have had the inside information, but they may have looked like it was going that way. I, and I'm sure a lot of these guys thought, and everybody was suspecting that if Workhorse got this contract, um, Lordstown was going to build the trucks for them, and that, or the trucks were going to be built on the Lordstown line, or the trucks were going to be assembled at Lordstown. And... You know, that's part of the panache of the company and, uh, you know, uh, the press and everything. And when they didn't get it, I think, and also the income, so certainly from the, that effort, early income, I think a lot of these guys sold out. That's my opinion. I don't know. That's a scenario. Okay. Um, again, uh, these are all two, four, first week in February. This was the third week in February. So two weeks before this. And then uh, just here's the uh, the call was until May 21st. So that's, you know, I don't know, three months later. So I don't, uh, I don't know. Um, going concern risk was on June 8th. That was even farther away. That was, you know, four or five months away. So I think, I think actually the reason for this selling was the postal contract my opinion my scenario what do you think tell me what you think all right now and this is the going concern announcement which by the way this is a box they have to check on that form when they file it and this is boilerplate and we all know what you know the cash situation is and so forth um and the debt situation is. So um, they have to base that on current uh, accounting. So, you know, we all know what the, what's going on with this, uh, all the fans. Now I wanna talk about, this is, um, this is very interesting. This is Angela Strand. She's an MBA out of Tennessee. Um, she's the acting uh, CEO now, I believe. Uh, experience working with fleets, OEMs, utilities, financing, infrastructure, deploy electric trucks. She was a ride director since 2020 and lead independent director since 20, April 2021. And um, holder of seven patents, patents and um, 
manager director of uh, strand strategy blah 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 anyway the interesting thing about her that i don't i thought i read it on this website but i i can't seem to find it now angela strand is also a board member of uh Nuvi holding corporation now if you haven't heard of Nuvi, Nuvi's a spec that came out and Here's the um, one month one month chart on on Nuvi. It's uh, doing the SPAC uh, blow up, melt down, and then crawl back up. But it's doing pretty good here. Uh, in the last month, I uh, I actually own a bit of this stock. Anyway, the point is, uh, see, it's uh, pre revenue, um, the market cap. You know, it's a small market cap. However, they, they do have operations in Europe. They have operations in Denmark and, and, and a lot of the uh, other European states. Uh, this is a company that uh, does the vehicle to grid technology and the vehicle integrated vehicle GIV platform. Uh, now, now the way this works is, and I'm just going to give you a ham-fisted explanation. Um, you know how the F-150 says they'll, they'll, uh, you know, power your house. Well, that's kind of a sideways version of this. This is vehicle to grid, and th this involves a bit of uh, special uh, hardware and inverter in the truck itself, and then the truck battery pack, and then they have a special charging. Uh, device, uh, you know, like the electric hose that you hook up to the truck, that's that's mounted onto a special um, technology uh, circuit board or whatever, the, and firmware that's in that as well. What this enables is the the truck can charge through that outlet, and it can also uh, during peak demand, it can supply uh, power to the grid. Uh, seamlessly and you can set up parameters as to when you want it to charge and when you don't want it to charge and so forth and the idea here is you know you want to balance demand I believe the these giant utilities like to run at 60 Hertz I'm not sure you guys that are engineers have to tell me anyway the point is if they run below that it's no good if they run above that it's no good so when you have this vehicle to grid software and hardware implemented in your fleet uh, it's like having a giant yard full of Tesla power walls basically and uh, you can customize it to power your facility or you can customize it to you know provide uh, either storage price basically su supply storage space to the grid or to sell the electricity back to the grid you can actually make uh, I think in Denmark right now they're talking about two thousand dollars a year it does cause a minor amount of battery degradation like two percent over a number of years so it's not it, it's not that it's not a big deal for the truck but anyway the point is I, I mentioned the postal service earlier. If if we had electric uh, postal delivery vehicles, and we had this technology on those electric postal vehicles, can you imagine the size of the power wall we'd have in in the United States of America? Do you think we'd have any blackouts? Do you think Texas would lose power? Do you think? I mean, I don't know about Texas. I don't know how they got it set up down there. But the point is. This would have been, this would have put America right at the cutting edge, would have upgraded our utility infrastructure. I mean, you know, selling, selling the workhorse uh, vans made by Ride and then the, with this technology in them. And I'll tell you something else, and I'm working on a, on a uh, uh, video on this. You know, the, the demand that the wide acceptance of, of uh, electric vehicles is going to put on the grid, you're going to have transformers blowing up. I mean, there's going to be brownouts. There's going to be all kind of stuff going on. I read somewhere that an EV uses is, is about the same uh, load on a grid as uh, three, three homes. 
So anyway, average size homes. So anyway, the point is, you know, having this, um, having this uh, uh, V to G resource of all those postal trucks. Can you imagine how this would have upgraded our grid? Because everybody's talking about, well, how are we going to, how are we going to meet demand? How are we going to upgrade our grid? You know. The last thing these power companies want to do is shut down a generating source when there's no demand. So they need to store it somewhere. Where do you store it? Vehicle to grid. Okay. And, you know, and again, you can, you can program this a million different ways. And they have statistics and so forth. This was actually developed back in the first iteration of electric vehicles. It was a concept by a university professor that was, has been taken up and modernized. But anyway, um, I wonder if Angela Strand, well, Angela Strand, I believe, is going to work with NUVI to Im implement this along with the uh, endurance. I would imagine, I do not know, but I think it would be a great system to have in place with the fleet operators. They, they provide the charges and the technology and everything, and um, I think they have a management fee they charge or whatever, but the point is, I have a feeling, since she sits on the board of this company, that uh, they're going to implement this in the uh, fleet applications for um, Lordstown. And now this may have been part of the reason they wanted to get away from uh, the Otis, and they want to, you know, they want to keep everything self-contained. They don't want to take any partnerships or anything on. Could be. I don't know. But anyway, I think this is a very interesting company, interesting technology. It's interesting that the acting CEO of Lordstown is on this board. And I think, and I have seen a presentation on the endurance that says they can be equipped as an option to do this. So the, techno the technology is there, uh, execution, implementation. Anyway. Pretty interesting. I did not know this before the other day. It's kind of hard to find out. I hope you guys like it. That's a scoop. And uh, let's look at that chart again. Hey, hey, baby. Woo, look at that. All right, anyway. All right, now, this is another topic that's getting extremely difficult to find. And Stock Hut, I watched all Stock Hut. Hey, shout out to Stock Hut. I watched all Stock Hut's videos today. I had to get on. Had to get on the YouTube and get this information out. Uh, now here, this is difficult to find. Uh, it's not on their website. I saw a brief flash of it on YouTube as a announcement, but I could not find it again. Uh, it's kind of a waiting in queue for the live stream. Anyway, Lordstown Motors, and this is uh, June 8th, okay, all right. Lordstown Motors announces live from Lordstown virtual tour. Lordstown Motors announced this morning it would host a live from Lordstown virtual tour preview of the startup electric manufacturer's operations on Friday, June 25th. It's going to cap off Lordstown week as we prepare to open our doors. And so they're letting the investors and the fleet customers and analysts all go in first. And I think some locals as well. Um, the virtual presentation will include a tour of the plant, a preview of Lordstown Motors vehicle lineup, and a ride-along experience in a 21 Lordstown Endurance. The, the presentation will be followed by a live question and answer session with Lordstown Motors executives. So this is what we've all been asking for. And now, here's the rub. You, those interested in participating in the event can visit the company's website, lordstownmotors.com, on June 25th at 2.30 p.m. So, they are saying here you got to visit the website at 2.30. Whether that's going to be streamed uh, to YouTube, I don't, it doesn't appear that it's going to be. It might be shown as a recorded video later. I think Stock Hut mentioned that he was going to try to stream this. Uh, but in any case, this is how you can view it go to lordstownmotors.com june 25th at 2 30 p.m and i guess that's local time and so that's a four hour time difference um so for us it would be duh 
10 a.m., something like that, maybe, for Pacific time. Anyway, and then uh, I just wanted to say something about, I've been watching the videos from, I'm going to just show a short snippet of a video that's been taken at Lordstown Week. One thing I love about Lordstown Week is you got a bunch of guys, you know, they're a little rumpled, they're a little, maybe a little paunchy, you know, but they, they got their stuff together. They got this truck. The truck's running good. Did you see the moose test? I'm a big moose test, guys. That thing aced the moose test, and it's not even fitted out yet or finished with the uh, torque vectoring. That is a big deal. Anyway, the point is, yeah, you know, it's Lordstown. It's Ohio. They got the guy demonstrating the uh, military EV. He's got the tats, you know. He's got his biceps out. You know what I mean. Hey, puts his hat on backwards to get in the truck, driving through the mud in the field there. Uh, I'm rambling. The point is, compare that to Tesla, where they got the style. To, Elon Musk is all styled. Who styled him? He's got his personal stylist. And then the guy that designs uh, the cars, what's his name? Sven or whatever his name is. Uh, again, uh, looks like a Calvin Klein model styled. Yeah, Lordstown, real people making real trucks for real people. I like it. Anyway, that's just my two cents. You know, it ain't California, it's Ohio. Ha! America. That's why I think these haters can't stand it. Because it's so American, you know. Anyway, I don't want to get off on that tip again. Anyway, just for closing here, I'm just going to show you. This is just a quick, I'm just going to show a snippet of this. I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to play a little bit. I'm going to go to full screen here. Past that, we're going to go into a There you go. Then we'll do tight turn. We'll and stages there's the interior of the truck. I think it looks great. I think it's great to finally so right see now, the inside of the truck. And uh, I, I do like the interior. You know, it's normal. Have you guys nuts. done any uh, uh, like and pulling load testing? Anyway. I personally have not. And they're talking about load testing here. And I, I just want to tell you, I was looking over the Ford stats today. Most of the people that bought the retail bought the highest priced truck at the, with the biggest battery. I was looking at their fleet uh, and and sales sheet. All the there are so or many gotchas on that increased. thing. Well, if you want to have this tone, you got to get this battery stage. pack. You got to get this so Supreme pack. You got to get this. You got to get that. Know, I mean, a, a you could tell the CEO is a car guy. Made. So anyway, uh, you can look at these videos okay. on. Um, on YouTube, Stock Hut has links to them. I don't want to use too much of this video. I wanted to show the, the. Uh, I love that screen. I love the way that interior looks. I wanted to show the moose test here where they're swerving in between these cones. But I guess I didn't cue it up right. All right. Anyway, this is look. I love that dash. Anyway, all right. So I'm gonna kill this now, and uh, this is MXUX and. Uh, I hope you liked this uh, video. I'm going to do a close uh, at the end and review. Thanks for watching. Okay, this is MXUX. This is a risk on stock. It's a pre revenue SPAC startup and it could result in catastrophic losses. Seek professional guidance. I am not a financial advisor, okay? Anyway, uh, a lot of interesting stuff here. I thought I'd want to share with you. Especially how to see the live stream there. I had a hard time finding that. Hope you guys liked the video. Um, just in closing, I'll just say uh, I think the endurance looks great. But seeing a finished truck like that, it's riding great. I love it because it doesn't have any motor noise either. You notice that? There's a few squeaks there, but they're going to work those out. Uh, no electric motor noise. Anyway, here's a bumper. The F-150 Lightning planning a total remake in 2025 so I obviously didn't get it right thanks thanks for watching guys MXUX